Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I, uh, I don't know why I have to follow the guy that's been practicing medicine for 35 years, or the guy that works with Brad Pitt, or the guy that has the best middle school in New York City. So, like shit. So, but anyway, I'm going to do my best here today to kind of share with you Braddock's story and, uh, and understand that Tim works with Brad Pitt, but they say politics is show business for ugly people. So this has been my... Uh, my, uh, <laughs> this has been my choice uh, uh, to work with um, some of these issues. So I uh, was also asked to speak quickly, so I will hopefully come through at a quick pace. Okay, Braddock, Pennsylvania, if anyone's not, not familiar with Braddock, Braddock, Pennsylvania is located 10 miles outside downtown Pittsburgh. It is about point. Uh, two-thirds of a square mile large, and it was incorporated in 1867. Uh, as of the 2010 census, it is 2,300 residents. Why is Braddock famous? Why is Braddock historic? It's where Andrew Carnegie got his start. The Edgar Thompson plant opened in our community in 1875 and actually still runs to this day. Most of, have more than half the world's steel came from the Monongahela Valley, of which Braddock is part of, and the Edgar Thompson plant it was the first and now it actually is the last functioning steel mill in the Pittsburgh region. This is what Braddock Avenue looked like in 1955. Hope you can all see that uh, from the glare off my head. And uh, <laughs> it looks like New York City. It looks like Chicago. It looks like any prosperous urban neighborhood back in the 50s. And this was really kind of Braddock's post-World War II apex of economic prosperity. Over 20,000 residents occupied this two-thirds of a mile's patch. If you look at the 1929 business directory, just a cursory summary, you have uh, 53 restaurants, 14 furniture stores, uh, 14 jewelers, all within this entirely com compressed neighborhood. Incredibly prosperous. There was an expression, if you can't buy it in Braddock, you don't need it. But if you fast forward to 2012, all those numbers drop down. That is a picture of Braddock Avenue as it currently stands today. The sad thing is, above and beyond those numbers all dropping down to zero, is that the building in that photograph is not being torn down. It actually fell down during a storm, and we had to fence it off until we could secure emergency demolition dollars. Braddock poverty. Braddock po is the poorest community in Allegheny County. Allegheny County comprises 1.2 million souls, including the Pittsburgh region. We are the 1%. Fortunately, that's at the bottom 1%. The median house price, that is not a typo. That's $4,800 for a median house price in our community. Most of our homes, it's not common for it to be sold less than that. They're not worth anything. In some cases, we couldn't even give away a vacant house in some circumstances. Put Braddock in perspective. I read in the New York Times that uh, this weekend that a a couple bought a brownstone, an abandoned brownstone in Harlem for $917,000. If they put that much into it, fixing it up, you've exceeded our entire municipal budget. Median household income, if you look at that, 17.5 compared to the rest of the country and the state, and our employment rate generally trends two and a half to three times higher than the national average. More examples of Radic Avenue. You look at the, the magnificent grandeur of what Braddock used to look like in terms of architecture and commerce. Once that building becomes a vacant, it becomes a memory. This is another example of Braddock Avenue property. Once again, this building was not in the process of being torn down. The back of it fell clean off during a thunderstorm a couple summers ago. Did a survey of the headlines. I went to the postgazette.com, did a headline survey, just put in Braddock, didn't cherry pick any of these particular headlines, but Braddock was considered to be a dangerous place, a violent place, an undesirable place that many people didn't really even want to drive through and certainly didn't really want to consider living in or embracing. Compounding our misery, in 2009, the town's largest employer, University of Pittsburgh Medical Center closed its 270,000 square foot hospital in our community, 2009. To put that in perspective, that's twice the size of a Walmart in a town our size. So you can imagine the effect above and beyond 
removing proximate quality medical care for our residents was devastating on an economic basis. This is a picture of what it looked like basically a year ago when the UPMC was demolishing this once important, magnificent structure in our community. So really it brings us to what is Braddock's unique problem. It's like, what can you do for a community that has lost 90% of everything that made it Braddock? 90% of its population is gone, 90% of its building stocks are gone, housing as well. Uh, I think it's fitting that I go after Katrina. Socioeconomically, we are very much like the Ninth Ward, but we've also lost a heck of a lot more than the Ninth Ward in terms of our building and housing stock as well. So this is a quick run through of the things that we've implemented since 2006. We put our young people to work. Unemployment in our, for our young people in many communities similar to Braddock uh, during the summer runs somewhere between two-thirds and three-quarters. Anyone knows that idle hands, da-da-da-da-da-da. So what we did is set out and we created Allegheny County's largest summer employment program. And this isn't putting on orange vests and picking up cigarette butts. This is urban agriculture. This is the arts. This is learning a lot of other talents and skills that are, thank you, that are applicable into the work world. 90% of our town is in a landfill, so it's really important that we do the best we can with the 10% that's left. This is the new stained glass window in our new community center, which is the first time stained glass has gone into a church in Braddock instead of being taken out in about 50 to 60 years. These are, this is an specimen of what Braddock's typical housing stock is like. We don't have magnificent brownstones or big historic mansions. This is worker housing because Braddock was a working town. Two up, two back, two bedroom. These homes were essentially abandoned. What we did is we realized that we have a, a shortage of housing for young people from our community that are leaving the foster care system. We fixed these homes up. And now we've created housing for children that are in, exiting the foster care system that would otherwise not have a place to go. Back in 2007, this project was 2007, and we are in the process of closing and selling this duplex to a young man, one of the first residents there, a foster, child, uh, foster kid, who is now going to own his own home as well as have a rental property as a result. This is the main thoroughfare, and this is a representative of the lots that we have on Braddock Avenue. You can kind of see the, the amazing architecture in the background there, but this was what our main thoroughfare used to look like. So what we did it was we take that, we created the first really functional operating playground in the entire community. I remember today, play is very important. Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers came from Pittsburgh, and he said, play is the work of childhood, and I couldn't agree more. So you can imagine a community that in 2006 didn't have a functional, operable playground. This was a, the, one of the original J.C. Penney stores in the country. It was also uh, falling down, so this was also adjoining to our new playground. So what we did is we tore that down and replaced it with playhouses to create really was almost like, I'd say, close to two acres of a playground for our children and the community to kind of run around and stretch. This was one of Braddock's main, uh, main street hotel. Uh, Braddock had about 20 hotels back in its heyday. It went beyond the point of any possible reclamation. So we turned it into, oh, he's not here, but uh, we've got a lot of hoops, a lot of big hoop houses, actually a lot bigger ones. So we created a two-acre urban farm. two-acre urban farm which provides jobs for our young people and provides fresh produce for our produce stand uh, during the summer months as well as, um, as, well as we, there's enough surplus that we actually sell to restaurants in the Pittsburgh area. I don't know if anyone can see that, but that was our original welcome sign. You know, and I'm not, you know, I'm not even making this up, so I mean, that's the, the best handshake for somebody driving into your town saying, do I want to buy a home or open a business here when the Crips are sponsoring your welcome sign? <laughs> so one of the first things that we did is like, okay, that has to go, of course. <laughs> so so we, we built a new welcome sign. This is one of the first projects that our Braddock Youth Project did. Um, and now this 10 by 10 sign greets people. Ironically, young people from Braddock built both those signs in a very real sense. 
Uh, Braddock generating buzz. Bees, honeybees, love abandoned buildings. Braddock has a lot of abandoned buildings and homes. So instead of having these bee populations, these important bee populations destroyed, we put them in colonies. And now kids, like the ones that are from the middle school actually, now take a actual beekeeping course right here in Braddock as part of their curriculum. We brought back Braddock's annual block party, uh, which had long since to uh, exist. Uh, Easter egg hunt, which actually you're all welcome to next week. Next Saturday, come on out for our next uh, 2012. If they won't come to us, we hear that phrase food desert a lot. Well, Harlem is a food desert, and I don't argue that, but Braddock is a food desert. <laughs> so, as you might imagine, ice cream trucks don't line up to kind of run through during the summer. So what we did is we found this great ice cream truck driver, bought the ice cream from him in advance. So about once every two weeks, he drives around our community and passes out free ice cream to the children as a, way of, as a way of outreach and also um, something to do. Uh, again, uh, youth activities. I, I've never lost an arm wrestling challenge, by the way. Um, I joke that we're wrestling for paychecks. And the joke is, is that their paycheck is going to be bigger than mine because when they finally see it, it's like my paycheck actually as mayor is $150 a month. We took an abandoned school and we turned it into an art gallery, the only art gallery of its ki uh, kind in the region. Uh, I don't have any pictures of it to show you, but just this past uh, Saturday, we had a lovely event that brought out over 300 people uh, to, to Braddock to take in the, the culture, if you will. Urban homesteading, we had a couple buy this house, for example, for $4,300, turned it into something really special, um, really for a, a grand total of 5,000 to buy, 10,000 to fix it up. Levi Strauss came to town in 2009, said, we'd like to work with you, and we worked it out, and they made it a substantial investment in our community, gave us a new community center, excuse me, among other things, but of course, one of the things we insisted on was having the campaign contain only Braddock residents, and 100% of the benefit goes to the community. These are Levi's that I'm wearing. I did not even get these for free from Levi's, okay? <laughs> So really, what is it all this brought in Braddock? Well, let's step back and look at the crime metrics. So in 2006, we had 7,100 calls for police service. To, as of 2011, that number dropped down to 39. That's a drop of about 45% in police calls and crime activity in the community. 2011 numbers are roughly right in that same trend. And in 2010, we had 230 calls for service, which is the lowest number of calls for service in the entire history of, of Braddock's community. The most, some people ask me, people ask me, what are you most proud of? It's like, well, it's not a matter of pride, but the thing that's most meaningful to me that I can say after a number of years is, is that Braddock hasn't had a murder in town in nearly four years. This is, this, this is the, the sad uh, story of Braddock's last homicide, which was nearly four years ago. It was as called an epic gun battle that involved assault rifles. The young man that was slain in this battle was the baby's father of Deanne, who was in one of these slides here in the Levi's campaign. And as a small town mayor, you see these horrible things up close. And it's very arresting and it's incredibly painful to know that I've failed to some extent, and that's why this activity is allowed to occur in town. My forearm contains the dates of people that have been murdered since I've been in, in mayor of the community. Thankfully, I haven't had to add a name to that list for the last four years. But, but that is never too far away. My phone turned off. When I turn it on this afternoon, I could get a call that something's happened in town. Some recent successes, that's me shaking hands with County Executive Dan Honorado. We worked to establish a $20 million redevelopment plan for the hospital site once UPMC left. That's going to bring medical care, housing, and other amenities back to Braddock. Uh, who would have thought it, but they're going to film a movie in Braddock, featuring Braddock, uh, starring Christian Bale and Robert Duvall. That's great for Braddock's economy. It's bad for me because I'm going to get constantly confused with Christian Bale all the time. 
Braddock's Carnegie Library, the first in the country bestowed by Andrew Carnegie, just was entered into the National Registry of Historic Landmarks, only one of 2,500 buildings and sites in the country. And we were going to get, with the help of Levi's, surveillance cameras for those last two problematic areas in town where gun violence is a problem. However, we were not able to roll those cameras out, and then about a week and a half ago, we've had, we had two people shot at our one corner in town, which is problematic. So if people ask, oh, do you feel good about everything? It's like, absolutely not. Because you're never that far away. And I'm hopeful once the cameras do go up, the person that perpetrated this cowardly act uh, would have been apprehended. And it would have even happened because of the level of deterrence there. So everyone says, you know, Braddock, well, there's some green shoots, but it was a heck of a fire. And um, success, if you want to call any of this, is far from guaranteed, and uh, I just really f believe if there is any lesson to be taken from Braddock is that no place, no jurisdiction, no community deserves to be abandoned and discarded. So thank you very much.